a very good morning to you on Fellowship Day 190, 190. Nice round number to end the week. And I'm back with you after a few days offline, um, actually making preparations. This is sort of a weird time travelling moment. I was making preparations earlier this week to actually launch the Read Indeed podcast, which these musings have now become. So the first few episodes have been released. We are talking today much further down the line, but I'm excited about that. But mainly the past few days were offline without any recordings for you because on Wednesday and Thursday, I had the fantastic fortune of having two organised nights together with uh, some really close school friends of mine who have been friends with um, since my youngest days, uh, on some occasions at least, into you know uh, adolescence. Uh, I've, so you know uh, these people that I were meeting during the week, I've known them for at least two decades. And having those two nights out, well, what we did was we're not going crazy. You know, we are all guys in our early thirties. We are seeking more culture than chaos these days. Some of them, like me, have kids. So we're not going absolutely nuts, just taking the time to take the foot off the gas, have some dinner, have some drinks on Wednesday night. Four of us enjoyed um, dinner, drinks, and then a night on, in one of Glasgow's infamous venues underneath the Glasgow Central train station listening to a string quartet play live under candlelight. Now, this was fantastic and magical for many a reason. The first of which was this is the first time we'd seen any live music in almost two years. All standard COVID excuses apply. Um, so you could tell the musicians were just oozing enthusiasm because you know they've not been able to play live like that in so long. Uh, the audience, all safely wearing masks and distance, were just looking around the room. You could see that everyone was just happy to be there. And as I was sitting watching this string quartet play several pieces from the Beethoven canon, including the, of course, the four most famous notes in all of classical music. I actually shouldn't say the word classical. Um, I'll come back to that another time. Yeah, a new friend of mine, the great Simon Chalk conductor, um, takes some bridge against that term for reasons which I'll explain another time. But anyway, this, this music of an era, let's say from Beethoven, included the four most famous notes and all of that music. Da -da -da -dum. Da -da -da -dum. Um, so listening to that being played live whilst trains were roaring and rumbling overhead to make it seem like an earthquake was taking place while this music was playing. It was just the perfect way to get back into seeing live music, sitting there with my good friends, being in the moment, phone in my pocket, enjoying nothing but the music that was happening in that instant. Felt brilliant to be there. Felt very present, mindful, all of the above, just to switch off and enjoy that night with friends and uh, almost like a bad bus service two of these things came along at once we don't get together that often for the busy lives we all lead with work and family but the very next night uh, two of us managed to go out again my uh, dear wife had bought me tickets to the Glasgow Central train station tours a number of years ago again we couldn't go when she first gifted me those tickets because um, COVID and, and all of that. However, we managed to eventually uh, book a slot for Thursday evening, so the day after the string quartet. Uh, and myself and uh, my really close friend, who I've been friends with since I was five years old and bumped into him across back gardens while I was wearing my first Batman costume, two of us went together to tour Glasgow Central train station, uh, look at the architecture, find out the history of the place, all the battle scars of time, and go down into the belly of the beast and look at some of the 
now unused Victorian platforms that are there. And I, that was two hours of joy being led by a tour guide who was more uh, <laughs> actress than tour guide, I would say, just put on an absolutely fantastic performance to bring alive the history of this two century old train station. And again, it was with a close friend and that's the theme <laughs> that we're eventually getting to. I want to share with you today. There are few things that can recharge you and make you ready and focused for the work that you would want to do in a fellowship or other profession, like taking the time with friends. These friends of mine, as cultured as I made us sound, these are the sorts of guys who would mock me to the extent that some of what they would say would probably get them a jail sentence and get you flung out of your workplace. But you know, such is the closeness of these friends that, you know, it, you hopefully know what I mean. This is the sort of thing where nothing can, or almost nothing can offend each of you. Uh, everything is taken in jest. And at the very same time, you know that these folks would drop everything they're doing if you asked for help. I realise just how fortunate I am to have people like that in my life. And I'm glad that we actually reflect fairly often that what we have and what we've managed to maintain over several decades, not everyone has. You know, I say this sensitively knowing that, you know, some people might listen to this and go, yeah, that's all right for you. I don't actually have many friends or I've had to move around a lot and not being able to keep in touch with friends from back home or what have you. Yes, of course, social media helps us bridge that geographical gap on many occasions, but as we've all become hypersensitive over the pandemic to realise that nothing really captures the real life magic of being with someone in the flesh there and then and not looking at one another across two screens. My theme for you today around friendship is firstly to consider if you have these friends and if you feel like you're prioritizing absolutely everything about your work life over these people, just check in. You know, it's just ask them how they're doing, say that you were thinking about them that morning. You know, uh, bring up a, a memory of times that you have been able to spend more time together than, and that made you happy. And then hopefully you can take those moments of reflection and to check in, maybe to organise some more time together with these friends. And hopefully you, like me, will see uh, the magical ability for those times together to recharge you and actually make you more ready for work than less. The balance of this and the sister theme, of course, is if, like me, you're someone who does have the, the joy and the privilege and the great fortune to have groups of friends like that, then consider those who don't. You know, how can you reach out to check on someone that you might think is lonely? And if you are someone who's lonely, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I can advise anything or preach to you. But consider the ways that in which you might be able to try to reach out or see more people, new people. I think about um, a really inspiring case of a, a great friend of mine from my PhD days who came over to do his PhD in Glasgow from another country. And now I've mentioned this sort of a little bit on previous days where I've reflected on being welcoming to new team members. Well, this guy came over for his PhD, didn't know anyone, uh, didn't have any friends here. Um, he had a rich circle of friends back home, a rich circle of uh, close family members who he was connected to. But when he came to Glasgow, he was almost entirely isolated. And there were times, absolutely to his credit, that it was clear and that he made clear uh, that he did feel lonely or he wanted more social interaction in the evening. And his way to get around that was 
just to put himself out there on platforms like Meetup, where, you know, I, I having been in my own position, I had no appreciation for this until this friend would tell me about these things. That, that There are platforms like that where a lot of people in similar situations who are coming to the city from the outside or, you know, are on their own, you know, just want to meet up with a group of people, maybe go for dinner, you know, share the experience of... Uh, being scared in a new place or completely unfamiliar with the new territory. And from that, hopefully strike up some new friendships. But he could only do that because, uh, again, to his absolute credit, he was able to get over that that hurdle of anxiety or maybe even embarrassment to say, look, I'm here on my own. Can I come and join this group of people through this platform? So that's one way you might do it. Others might have better ideas and I'd love to hear from you if that's the case given that this theme on friendship is one I want you to consider and how you might connect with those who keep you connected to the broader world outside of the bubble of your day to day work that you might be so impassioned by as to forget everything else I also want you to consider some other things so again rather unusually I'm talking to you here whilst looking at my screen of some important statistics I think we would all do well to remember. So according to the campaign to end loneliness.org, here's some of the facts related to loneliness. In terms of health risks, loneliness is likely to increase your risk of death by about 26%. And living alone or with poor social connections are as bad for your health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. There are some estimates that say that loneliness is worse for you than obesity. Loneliness and social isolation are associated with an increased risk of deliver, uh, developing coronary heart disease and stroke. Loneliness increases the risk of high blood pressure. Loneliness with severe depression is associated with early mortality and loneliness is a risk factor for depression in later life. I hope, like me, you are partly scared and partly enlightened by what you've just heard. And of course, some of these elements of loneliness have only gotten worse since the pandemic kicked off and when many people have been forced to stay by themselves uh, if they're living alone and being uh, held back from making those in life, uh, real life connections with other people, other souls in this world. So consider the friendships that you could hold more dear and consider those who could use your extension of friendship. I hope you've had a great week. I'll see you again soon for another episode of what we're now calling the Read Indeed podcast. Thanks so much for being here. I hope this helps. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head over to the website where not only will you find the written blog versions of these podcasts, you'll find my leadership blog series, the daily thought series, and information about my book on managing the imposter phenomenon. We also have even more free resources and webinars linked to the YouTube channel. So head on over to dr-mark-read.com that's dr-mark with a c-r-e-i-d.com thanks again for listening